That's what exploration geologists do. That's our life, is looking at these little subtle details. Look at that bedding. And trying to find something much bigger. Nevada King had picked up the property for its regional potential. It wasn't for the mine itself. You start with a central area of mineralization like the old Atlanta resource. And once we could see potential for expanding upon that, then we start moving the exploration outward, looking at the areas immediately around the vicinity in this type of uh, gold system. Our work in Atlanta has shown that this district has far more potential than anyone ever suspected. It's taking us outward to places that no one's ever thought to look before. We've done a lot of geophysical work over the past couple years, and what that's showing us is a lot of deep plumbing. This is something that obviously we see at the Atlanta mine pit itself, but now we're realizing that there are regions in the district that have potential for similar mineralization the East Ridge Target, the Wild West Zone, the South Quartzite Ridge Zone is just lit up by CSAMT anomalies. Having these powerful geophysical tools has dramatically changed our potential in Atlanta. Everywhere we've gone here, we found gold and we found high-grade gold. Oftentimes what happens, a company will have some success, then they'll have a little bit more, then I'll have a little bit more. Then all of a sudden, boom, you've got a giant on your hands. If it's strong enough to do what it's doing at the Atlanta mine proper, it makes us really curious as to where are the other potential areas. And that's kind of where we've come up with our other targets regionally, starting especially with the South Quartzite Ridge target. So whole HG41 intercepted 6.28 grams per ton gold over 54.9 meters. And this started 147.9 meters downhole just beneath the quartzite cap. And this gives us really good confidence of this strong high mineralization continuing beneath the quartzite ridge target. Nanocline fold, it's a fold that forms the top of the ridge and Mineralizing fluids tend to get trapped underneath these folds. Two and a half kilometer strike length. And what our CSAMT lines show is that we have strong intrusive bodies and plumbing that essentially follow that along strike. The East Ridge target's really interesting because it's something that on the surface we've been aware of essentially since we got out here. It was sampled by Ken Ross and Goldfields back in late 1990s. Based on past operators and kind of the thought process is that this wasn't rooted. This was something that was probably a dip slope or essentially a, just a small scab on the surface related to the Atlanta mine. That kind of changed when we got our CSAMT back. When the CSAMT data came back, you clearly see a low resistance V-shaped structure running through that ridge. And this was intriguing because it's a detached anomaly. It stands on its own. The results came back essentially showing over 20 meters of over a gram material, all oxide, all hosted in an intrusive breccia pipe that showed that there was depth to that and that it was actually rooted. Confirmation of gold mineralization with intrusive, with CSAMT low resistivity, that is the thing that's most important of all, because that now gives us out there something that could be much, much larger. With these two well-defined associations between intrusive rock and gold mineralization and low resistivity, this opens up a very large area for us. The low resistivity zone dips to the east on the East Ridge Anomaly, which would indicate that the source of mineralizing fluids could potentially have come from the Jumbo Target area, where we've got low resistance capped by high resistance zones. We have these massive intrusive plumes, a great heat source, and they seem to be apexing just below the surface. We need to drill test this, see if this is something that, like the Eastridge target, pans out, that these CSAMT anomalies really do have a good vector. 
the Wild West, uh, we put a hole down based upon a geophysical anomaly, quite a ways to the west. That hole came back with a long length of moderate grade mineralization. So we offset it to the south with hole 83. The thing comes back and it really opens your eyes. 42.7 meters of 4.67 grams. Um, this includes 18.3 meters of 7.94 grams per ton gold. What is going on out here? What is giving us this type of strong, high-grade gold mineralization? The prior thinking was everything past the West Atlanta Fault Number 2 stops. There's not much mineralization there. Well, we have essentially about 11 holes down at the Wild West target now, many of which are coming back with high-grade intercepts up to 11 grams per ton. Now that's opened up a whole new target area for us that we didn't know about before. It's being called the Wild West because it's way out there in the west side and the intercept in this last hole was a wild intercept. This thing just keeps getting bigger the farther out you go. And where's the end of it? Who knows? Having these powerful geophysical tools with the high resolution gravity, air mag, and CSAMT, putting all these together with our recent drilling has really dramatically changed our concept of the potential in Atlanta. It just further opens the door for the potential for a really large deposit. This is why we came to Atlanta in the first place. It wasn't for the resource that already existed. It was for this caldera hosted potential that seemed to be apparent by looking at the historical data that this is a large mineralized zone. It's not just one zone. This is a system that extends through the entire caldera.